The wheel is a pretty important part of your bicycle, and if it's out of true or wobbling side to side, it can leave you with a less than pleasant riding experience. Hi, I'm Truman from Park Tool, and welcome to part two of our wheel truing series, where we'll be going over lateral or side to side truing. Before we get rolling down the lateral truing road, be sure to check out part one, how bicycle wheels work, to gain a better understanding of how your wheels keep you moving. The bicycle wheel is a hoop with a set of spokes that connect it to a hub. The spokes pull on the rim from both the right and left side. Wheel truing is the process of using a spoke wrench to change the spoke's tension in order to improve the spinning straightness of the wheel. It is this tightening and loosening of spokes that we'll use to manipulate spoke tension to true our wheels. Before we get started, let's talk about some common tools you'll need to start truing your wheels. First, we need to hold the wheel steady as it spins. One way to do this is to use a truing stand like these from Park Tool. These are common in bike shops and adjust to many different hub widths and different wheel diameters. Truing stands help isolate truing problems and allow for easier and faster work when truing. If you don't have a truing stand, you can use the bike to hold the wheel. The bike should be in a position so the wheel can spin freely. We need a stationary indicator that will help find lateral deviations. A truing stand has built-in indicator fingers that can be adjusted in and out from the rim to help us easily identify these deviations. If you are truing in the bike, you can make an indicator by attaching something to the frame like a zip tie. These can be moved in and out to show deviations as the wheel spins in the frame. Put one on each side of the rim. Depending on how your bike is set up, you may need to get creative with your indicator placement. You'll also need a way to turn the nipple at the end of the spoke. We increase tension by turning the nipple, or the nut of the spoke system. Looking at the nipple from the outside of the rim, you will turn it clockwise to tighten and counterclockwise to loosen. Working on a truing stand, however, we perceive the nipple as upside down so this direction is tightening the nipple. When working in the bike, the nipple is right side up, and this is tightening for the nipple. Spoke wrenches come in a variety of different sizes to fit different size spoke nipples, and it is important to use the correctly sized wrench. Too large a wrench will give a sloppy fit that will likely lead to rounding the corners and damaging the spoke nipple. If the bike wheel uses a common square-shaped nipple, best practice is to measure the wrench flats using a caliper. This gets you the wrench size that fits the nipple as snugly as possible. Otherwise, a multi-sided wrench such as the SW7.2 from Park Tool fits the three most common square nipple sizes. There are many different sizes and even shapes for spoke nipples, which we cover in this article on spoke wrench selection at parktool.com. If your wheel has bladed or flat spokes like these, they can twist around as the nipple turns. You need something to hold the spoke to prevent this, like the BSH-4. When you begin truing, if the nipples seem hard to turn or are creaky, they need lubricant. Put a drop of lubricant where the spoke exits the nipple and where the nipple exits the rim. And finally, if you are just beginning to learn wheel truing, it can be helpful to take the tire off of the rim. With the tire removed, the lateral deviations you're looking for at the rim will be easier to see. Install the wheel in a truing stand. Adjust your indicators so they are near the outer edge of the rim, but not touching the rim. This can help isolate deviations when the rim has a parabolic shape or has stickers applied to it. Spin the wheel and slowly move the indicators towards the rim, watching for where the rim gets close to the indicator. Keep moving the indicator closer until you see it lightly contact the spinning rim. The goal is to adjust the indicator so it just lightly rubs the rim. Bring your indicator in close and then back it out in order to find that light rub. This area of contact is the most severe lateral deviation in the rim. Slow the rim and stop it where the rim and indicator are touching. It doesn't matter if the left or the right indicator is touching the deviation. 
In fact, we're going to correct deviations from both the right and the left side of the rim to maintain proper wheel centering. Now, determine where to make spoke tension corrections. If the indicator seems to touch over a long area, find the center of that area. This spoke is at the center of our deviation. We need to tighten this spoke nipple coming from the right side of the hub to draw this part of the rim to the right. It is preferable to tighten spokes rather than loosening them. Spokes may loosen themselves over time if they are run too loose, but they will not tighten up on their own. A way to simulate what tightening a set of spokes will do is to give them a squeeze. By squeezing these two right side spokes by our deviation, we can watch how the rim moves when the tension of these spokes is increased. Let's tighten this spoke by turning the nipple. How much you need to turn it will vary. If it is a relatively bad lateral deviation, you will need to turn maybe one half of a turn. If it seems like a minor deviation, start with a smaller turn, maybe an eighth of a turn. The concept is to make a correction and watch for feedback of what you've done. For this, let's see if one quarter turn does anything. Move the wheel back and forth through this area to see if there is any progress. It seems better, but it is not completely gone. We need to repeat the process. Move the indicator closer, find contact, and correct. Spin it again, find the lateral deviation, and correct. That was three corrections on this side. Let's switch to the other indicator. For stands like the TS 2.2, you can use a small hex key under one arm to pull it out of the way. Spin the wheel and move the indicator inward. Find the lateral deviation where it lightly touches the indicator. As you can see here where we squeeze these spokes on the left hand side of the wheel, the rim moves to the left. So we will tighten this spoke nipple. Spin the wheel. Now you can see that section of rim is no longer hitting the indicator. Again, adjust the indicator towards the rim to find the next deviation to correct. Because this deviation is longer, we'll tighten these two spoke nipples and see if the deviation is gone. We move the rim back and forth through the deviation and we see it's been reduced. Spin the wheel again and move the indicator closer to the rim. Correct the deviation. Now, time to switch back to the other indicator. The wheel straightness gets better as the lateral deviations are reduced. As the wheel gets more and more laterally true, you can cut down to smaller corrections. So, that's the truing process. Locate, isolate, and correct the deviation. We've seen that as you work, the wheel will become more and more true. But how true is true enough? Well. This is a little bit subjective, and it depends on how the wheel has been ridden, also how it's been cared for, and what you personally want for your wheel. As a general guideline, you want about half a millimeter or less of lateral deviation. Half a millimeter is about five sheets of typical printing paper. And this will help you visualize what 0.5 millimeters looks like. Spin the wheel and adjust the indicator so it just barely rubs the rim. At the rub, the distance between the rim and indicator is zero. Sight the lateral deviation to get a sense of their size. This rim has over a one millimeter lateral deviation and would be considered to be out of tolerance. It needs a little bit more work. This rim has just one half millimeter of deviation and is certainly acceptable for most uses. However, if it gives you satisfaction to continue and make the wheel spin straighter and straighter, then keep finding deviations and making corrections. This wheel has a deviation of 0.2 millimeters. Sure, you could do more to it, but it doesn't necessarily make the wheel better for riding. After having adjusted quite a few spoke nipples, it's fairly common that the wheel needs to be de-stressed. Destressing a wheel allows the spokes that were wound up from turning the nipple to unwind. There are a few way different ways to do this, but the safest way is to simply ride the wheel. So put it on your bike, 
take it out for a ride. Expect some pinging and popping noise from the first few pedal strokes. That's common and of no concern. So that's the basic process for laterally truing a wheel. For more wheel truing, be sure to check out our other wheel truing videos in this series. We have videos on radial truing, spoke tension, dishing, and how a wheel works. Thanks for joining us. We hope you've learned something new and have a wonderful day.